Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Deuteronomy chapter 24. Please be a Berean for once in your life and get the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version. And follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Keep me accountable, follow me along, check me out, make sure I'm not lying to you. Check me out, make sure I'm not skipping a groove, okay? Follow me along in the scriptures, okay? Come on, let's do this, shall we? Deuteronomy chapter 24. This video is going to be a little bit different than what normally the Lord will have me to do. This is going to be a little bit of a rant today. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, okay? I'm sick and tired of, of a certain thing that keeps being leveled at me. And also several others. I'm done with it. And I'm going to refute it here in this video. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 14 on verse 18. Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren, Hebrew, the Jew, or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. Not a Jew. Okay? You got to remember, this is under the dispensation of the law. Okay? And under the dispensation of the law, it was faith and works. You had to keep the law in order to be right with God. Okay? You had to keep the law... Uh, and also, too, your faith was that in that if you kept the law, God would honor you for doing what he has said according to the law. That is what your faith was in. And for someone under the dispensation of the law wanted to get right with God, they had to go the way of the Jew, the Hebrew. Okay? You got to remember that. Let's continue. At his day, thou shalt give him his hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor. And setteth his heart upon it, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. Okay? Verse 16. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children. Neither, look at this, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Personal accountability for your own actions. What you have personally done. Every one of us is going to give an account of themselves to God. Now, whether or not you're going to do that at the great white throne of judgment or at the judgment seat of Christ for those who get redeemed. Okay? All right? All right? Okay? We all are going to give an account personally to God for what we have done. You cannot, even though lots of you like to do this, are Adamic in your ways say well it's his fault that i did this like adam did uh the woman that thou gavest me to be with she did give me of the tree and i did eat see adam was half-heartedly taking responsibility he first blamed god then he blamed the woman it's always someone else's fault oh oh and the whole world look look listen crazy psychopaths out there the world doesn't revolve around you Okay? <laughs> okay? It's all about Jesus Christ. Okay? But see, you can't, you can't blame someone else for what you do. You're not going to get away with it. You might get away with it down here. Okay? Because this world is in the hand of Satan, the little G-God of this world, Lucifer. Okay? Okay? You, you with me? But when it comes to standing before God, whether at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne, you're going to give account of yourself personally for everything you have done. Okay? Okay? And even under the law, right here, the fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor the fatherless. Stranger here in context, not a Jew. Okay? But thou shalt ream, okay. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment, raiment to pledge. But thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee hence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. In other words, don't forget from whence ye came. Don't forget, dear brother, sister, 
that you were once one of these lost people, that you were once one led about by your lusts, okay, that you were one of those ones that were snared by Satan, okay, and a lot of you, a lot, conveniently seem to forget that, okay, but Okay, we mustn't forget where we came from. We mustn't dwell there. And see, that's a tactic of the enemy. They want to keep you back here. They want to keep you from pressing forward. Okay? By dredging up things that are long repented of and long forgiven. Okay? But that's what the enemy does. They want to keep you suppressed. They want to suppress you. Okay? We are to forget those things that are behind and to press forward. We aren't to, you know, we aren't to be oblivious of where we came from. But to dwell back there? No, 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 no. We're not to forget from whence we came. But again, in verse 16, The father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for their fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Okay? Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18. <laughs> with so many people who want to excuse their sin, ignorance, and or stupidity by going to Ezekiel chapter 18, okay? Under the law. Got to remember that. You got to rightly divide the word of truth, yes. But they go here and they, they, they always neglect a certain aspect of Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 19 on to verse... 23, okay? Yet say ye, why? Doth not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father? When the Son hath done that which is lawful and right. Remember, this is under the dispensation of the law. We are looking at this for our instruction in righteousness, okay? We desperately need this, okay? When the Son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and hath done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Showing you right there the dispensational difference, okay? The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Everyone giving account for their own thing before the Lord, okay? Personal accountability, okay? But if the wicked will turn, oh, turn, uh-oh, turn from all his sins which he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. This is under the dispensation of the law, okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. We are not for a requirement for our salvation. We are not required to keep the law in order to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. Okay? That was a different dispensation under the law. It is not a requirement today to the Jew first who is descended from Shem, the Hebraic line. Okay? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? Okay, I, this is very simple. But see, heretics who are racist themselves and teach you that God is a respecter of persons today say to you, well, you got to keep the law today. No, you do not. Not for salvation. Not at all for salvation or to be right with God. Okay? There is, there is a law that we keep that is pertinent for this dispensation, but the law, like the Ten Commandments, you couldn't keep that at your and if you blew it at one point, you blew it in all, okay? The Ten Commandments were there to show you how inept you were to keep God's perfect requirements. And God's perfect requirements have never changed. But the way he deals with man as pertaining as being right with him, that is what changes. And that's what makes a different dispensation. Comprende? Okay? We've talked about this at length before. Like I told you, this is going to be a little bit of a rant here, okay? Let's continue. Verse 22, all his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. And the one that so many people like to mess up, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God? And they stop. They stop right there. 
and not that he should return from his ways and live. Um, what is that called? Uh, verse 30. Uh, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways. Seth, the Lord God, repent. And turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Repent. Repentance. Now see, under the dispensation of the law, you got to see, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. You got to be dispensational. Okay. The, the whole of scripture is written for you, but it is not all written to you. You got to rightly divide the word of truth or you become a wicked devil like Mark the messenger. Okay. See in verse 23 and that, and not that he should return from his ways and live under the dispensation of the law. Okay, turn from all your sin. You couldn't do that today even if you tried. You couldn't do that today if you tried. They were under the law to keep the law in this dispensation because the perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to be made. It has finished today. We don't need to keep the law in order to be saved or be right with God, you wicked heretics. Okay? Okay? But the point of this little thing is, okay, the point is, the point is, <clears throat> verse 20, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. And let's refresh our memories one more time in Deuteronomy chapter 24. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16. The father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. You racist Hamites out there, and you racist, racist, racist isn't even a word in scripture, okay? You kindredists out there, I should say, beg your pardon, you Kindredist Hamites, you kindredist Japhethites, okay? To you, the Hamite, have I oppressed you? Hmm? Have I enslaved any of your precious, blessed kindred? Hmm? Have I done any of that to you? Hmm? No, I haven't. Have I oppressed your kindred? No. I have not, okay? I have not. Have I treated any of your kindred lesser than my kindred of Japheth? No, I have not. I have not oppressed any of you, okay? I have not oppressed you. I have not uh, kept your people under, okay? I have not suppressed you, all right? You're racist. Excuse me. You're a kindredist. Ra racist is the appropriately acceptable word. But when you look in scripture about race, it has nothing to do with the color of your skin. Okay? I have not oppressed one Hamite. Okay? I have not oppressed anyone. I have not uh, kept under subjection the Hamite. Okay? I have not uh, enslaved any of the Hamite, I, Brad Paul Avenshine, have not done that. My father hasn't. My father's father hasn't. My father's father's father hasn't. Okay? See, what this is, and see, this is the work of the Jesuit order. As it, is, as it says in the Art of War, supposedly written by Sun Tzu, the best way to destroy a nation is eternally. To have them fighting against each other, okay? Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, subversion. The, uh, the art of subversion, to subvert a nation, to get a nation to destroy itself. The Jesuit order wants to bring about in America a race war, okay? That's what they want to do. They want to get the kindreds fighting against each other, but yet the only answer is to come under the headship of Roman Catholicism and bring everybody together. 
Okay? See, it's the Hegelian principle. They make the argument. They make the counter-argument to bring about their established end. Okay, and the Jesuits' established end is to bring everyone under the headship of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay, all right? But see, today, in this dispensation, God is not a respecter of persons. He is not. But see, you have the British Hebrew Israelite, okay, of Japheth, teaching that God is a respecter of persons. You have the black Hebrew Israelites of Ham saying that God is a respecter of persons. That devil, Mark the messenger, it's like, well, if you're a chosen one, then... meaning because of the color of the skin. That's what he's talking about. He's a racist. Okay. He's a kindredist. Okay. What Mark the messenger does is a veiled form of Calvinism. Calvinism does elect and non-elect. Okay. Elect and non-elect. All right. The Calvinistic Puritans that came here before the Freemason founding fathers of this Jesuit nation of America, okay? But the ancestors, the true ancestral ship of the Japhethites in this nation, Calvinistic, English Calvinistic Puritans, okay? But the Freemason founding fathers, Okay, some people like to argue this, okay, you want to argue this all day, fine, until you're blue in the face, okay, go ahead, go ahead, all right, Freemasonry, our founding fathers were Freemasons, there are those who like to argue, well, George Washington wasn't, he was a Baptist, he might very well have been a Baptist, but he was a Freemason first, okay, our founding fathers were deists, they believed in the great architect of this universe, which is the light bearer, Lucifer, Satan. Okay? Okay? Our founding fathers were Freemasons. Our founding fathers were not of the Church of the Living God. Okay? You go ahead and argue all day. Okay? You go ahead. The proof is in the pudding. Okay? And the white... Founding fathers, the free Masonic founding fathers that did that constitution, a majority of them were slave owners. This is true. This is true. Okay, this is true. This is true. America is a melting pot. This is true. A bunch of America was built on exploiting other kindreds. Not just the kindred of Ham. Not just. But other kindreds as well. Okay? This is true. This is true. But, verse 16 in Deuteronomy chapter 24, The father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Okay? Right? These people who accuse us of the Church of the Living God of being racist, being kindredists, they are the ones who are actually racist, kindredists. Okay? They are the ones. Because what are they doing? They are teaching that God is a respecter of persons. What say the scripture? Under the law, different dispensation, faith and works. In this dispensation, saved by His grace through our faith. Okay? All right? And, uh, and, and even the wicked, easy believism heretics are actually pretty good at this aspect of it. They, however, twist it. Their work is they save themselves by their belief. Okay? The easy believism is heresy. Okay? We are saved by His grace through our faith, okay? Not because you just simply turn on a light switch and say, okay, I believe. Now you say, no, but it doesn't work that way. Nor does it work the way, well, because I can utter something that makes you say, but it doesn't work that way, okay? You got to be broken, have contrition, and have the fear of the Lord. And that comes in one fell swoop once the Lord grinds you to powder, okay? 
But if this is a different dispensation. This is the mystery of the gospel that the Gentiles were grafted in, okay? Because salvation is of the Jews, the Hebrews, okay? The Jews. In scripture, a Jew is usually, nine times out of ten, a reference onto the Hebraic people. There are some slight exceptions, which uh, will be in the video in the description box, what is a Jew, okay? But many people out there, the Calvinists, the uh, Kindredists, the black Hebrew Israelites, okay, or the, uh, uh, what is it, the British Hebrew Israelites, okay, you're not a Hebrew, you're of Ham, you're not a Hebrew, you're of Japheth, okay, there are those who are of Shem who are not Hebrews, such as the Chinese, the Japanese, the Korean, the Thailanders, and stuff like that, or those from Thailand, excuse me, okay, they are of Shem, but they're not of the Hebraic line. Hebrew, called out. Okay? Okay? God is not a respecter of persons today in this dispensation. Romans chapter 2. And this, this is beautiful. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 11. Therefore thou art an inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Well, right away, right away, people say, well, see, we're not supposed to judge. We're not supposed to judge hypocritically. Okay? Okay? All right? Uh, in thou, okay, therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. We all sin, yes, but see, I'm a saved sinner. Most of you, unfortunately, are lost sinners. So when you got lost sinners judging people for the same things and they're not saved, hence hypocritical judgment, okay? And you read here in Romans chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 24, it's plainly talking about hypocritical judgment. You are to judge people, okay? Get your head out from betwixt your buttocks, okay? Anyone who says don't judge is doing it every time, every time, every time to justify their sin. Every single time, without exception, okay? Without exception. Let's continue. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to belief? Oh, oh, excuse me, repentance. Turning from your self righteousness. See, those who judge others in their self righteousness, okay? Okay, lost sinners, judging lost sinners in their own self righteousness. Well, I'm a good person. That's hypocritical judgment. We of the church of the living God, we know we're not good. We, we know, we, we abhor ourselves and repent in dust and ashes, but we have a standard on which we judge the authorized version of the scriptures. We judge first ourselves, and hence we you know, get the beam out of our own eye. Meaning, hypocritically, okay? If I were still a sodomite, Preaching to people not to be sodomites or against sodomy, and I was still practicing sodomite, that would mean I would be a hypocrite. That's the type of judgment that's being condemned. Okay? If you're a drunkard and going to say to drunkards, don't drink, don't get drunk, and you're a drunkard, you're a hypocrite. That's the type of judgment that's being condemned. Okay? You are to judge. Righteous judgment. What is righteous? What is according to the scripture, dear friend? Okay? All right? Verse 5. But after thy hardness and impentient heart, not willing to kneel, unbroken, impentient, uh, penance, okay, penance, uh, kneeling, okay, this is where the word penance is re uh, derived from, okay, but impentient heart, not willing to kneel, unbroken, okay, unbroken, but after thy hardness and impentient heart, treasurest up unto thyself, Wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. That, you know, I'm a good person, and yet you'll kill anyone who says otherwise. What makes you a good person? Huh? What makes you a good person? There is no such thing. Okay? There is not. What is good is God. 
He is the only thing that is good. And you want to know what good is? Here you go. Find out through the scriptures. But see, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? You kept the law that was your own goodness. Today we are saved by his grace through our faith. Okay? All right? So when you got lost people who say they're a good person, but yet they're not saved. <laughs> Their goodness proceedeth of themselves, not the Lord. That's hypocritical judgment. Okay? Okay? <clears throat> but after thy hardness and impentient heart, treacherous up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient, continuing, and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. What is good? God. And how do you find out what is good? Through the scriptures. Rightly dividing the scriptures according to the dispensation that we are in. Verse 11, for there is no respect of persons with God. Today, in this dispensation, there is no respecter of persons of God, with God. There is none. That's the mystery of the gospel. Romans 11. We have been grafted in to make the Jew jealous. Okay? Acts. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Verses 9 on to verse 15. This, the book of Acts was a book of transition. Okay? Going from under the law... Onto this dispensation. With the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blood that he shed on the cross, that brought in this dispensation. Okay? But God is a just God. The gospel went to the Jew first, and then it came on to us. But within this dispensation, it was by grace through faith. Regardless. Okay? There are those out there who tell you that there are two bodies, one of the Jew and one of the Gentile. That, that, that this dispensation did not start until Acts chapter 7. That is a lie. It began, excuse me, with the death of the testator. That brought in this current dispensation. Okay? All right? But Acts chapter 10, after Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 7 is when the Jew, the Hebrew, rejected the gospel as a nation, not individually, because there were individual Hebrews, Jews that got saved. Absolutely, but obviously. Okay? But as a nation, Jewry rejected the gospel. And hence, God brought it on to us Gentiles, grafting us into their tree to make them jealous. Okay? But yet, it was always this dispensation by grace through faith. Okay? But this is Acts chapter 10. After Acts chapter 7, obviously. Verses 9 on to verse 15. Peter. Okay? On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have neither eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Some will point to this as where uh, God took away the dietary restrictions. No, uh, that was done with this dispensation with the death, burial, and resurrection. But where you go to prove that the dietary restrictions, as according to the law, were undone, you go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Okay, You can eat pork today. If you choose not to, Romans chapter 14, fine, go ahead. It be Avoid pork like the plague, but it's not a requirement as under the law because we don't keep the law today to be saved or stay saved or be right, right with God. Okay? Okay, let's continue now. So the Lord said right there, and the voice spake again, spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. 
It's not talking about uh, actual food. What is he talking about? Oh, look to verse 25 on to verse 28 now in Acts chapter 10. Cornelius, a Gentile, who, uh, verse 1, there was a, centur a certain man uh, in Caesarea Carl called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. So here was a Gentile who was doing things that were required of the law. Because Moses was available, uh, being preached in every synagogue, okay? And under the law, if a Gentile wanted to be all uh, right with God, they had to go onto the Jew. They had to do the things that were prescribed under the law, okay? Because salvation is of the Jew. They had to go onto the Hebrews under the law, okay? So he, he was doing that. But Paul, Peter here, okay, the Lord's like, hey, what I've cleansed, call not thou common. Okay, verses 25 and verse 28. So Cornelius was a Gentile who was doing things under the law. Okay. And Peter, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up saying, stand up, I myself also am a man. And, you know, the Catholic says that their Francis, excuse me, that Sosa is a descendant of the first popery or whatever, that Peter was the first pope, and yet the pope allows people to worship him, but yet their apparent first pope wouldn't let a man worship him. Yeah, yeah, Catholic, okay. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, ye know, perspective of a person thing right here. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. That's what the vision was about. That's what the vision was about. And then you got these people like the Calvinists and you got these heretics like the black Hebrew Israelites or the British Hebrew Israelites that teach the serpent seed doctrine or Mark the messenger who teaches because he's black that he's a chosen one. That's what he teaches. He says he's a Hebrew. He's not a Hebrew. He's a descendant of Ham. Okay? You can't be a Hebrew. You're of Ham. I can't be a Hebrew. I'm of Japheth. Okay? Get it through your thick head, you racist people. You kindredists. Get it through your thick head. Okay? Okay? But Peter, he, you know, hey, I'm not supposed to have dealings with these Gentiles because it's a respecter of persons. See? See? And that's what so many heretics teach. Respecter of persons. Okay. Or another example, these idiots, charismatics, who believe that in order for you to be saved, you have to actually see the Lord with your own two eyes, right? So God's a respecter of persons because you've seen it, huh? Respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons today. In Acts chapter 10 still, verses 34 on to verse 43. Okay. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Christ, that's anointed one, okay? With the Holy Ghost and with power, fullness of the Godhead bodily, who went about doing good and healing and all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him, doing good. He kept the law perfectly, something that no man at their best could ever do, okay? Only God could do it. God manifest in flesh, okay? And we are his witnesses of all these things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and shewed him openly, not to all people, because it was to the Jew first, then to us Gentiles, okay? 
but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after that, after he rose from the dead. And see, right in there, you got heretics like Mark the Messenger saying that he's one of these elitist chosen ones, like the Calvinists. They are elitist. They are the esoteric. Okay? Okay? <laughs> exoteric. Okay. Excuse me. Exoteric and esoteric. Okay? I get that confused. I get that confused. One second. One second. Yes, esoteric. That is the ones that are the elite. Exoteric. Those are the common people. And see, see, brethren, so many out there. Mark the messenger, the Calvinists. They teach and preach an esoteric doctrine. Okay, that God is a respecter of persons. Okay, look, look at these Black Lives Matter. Okay, Black Lives Matter. Okay, a movement started by Soros who is in league with the Vatican, okay? And you want to know something about Black Lives Matter, okay? You want to see the strongest critiques and rebukes against Black Lives Matter? It came from Hamites, those of the precious kindred of Ham, okay? The greatest rebukes against Black Lives Matter came from Hamites themselves, okay? But see, so many out there preach this esoteric doctrine, that they are elitist, that we are the chosen ones. God is, they teach, God is a respecter of persons. God is not a respecter of persons today, self-ethically. No, he is not. Let's continue, okay? Him God raised up the third day and shewed him openly, not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick alive and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. And how do you arrive at that belief? Being broken. God is not a respecter of persons. But you got Mark the Messenger teaching you that God is a respecter of persons. Okay? He is not. You got the Calvinists teaching you that God is a respecter of persons. He is not. Today, in this dispensation, you got these idiot charismatics who teach you that God is a respecter of persons because you keep, because you, you blah, 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 or that you actually see God with your own two eyes or that you're elect or non-elect, or that you're black, or that you're a British Hebrew Israelite, or some nonsense like that. Okay? That's, that's people teaching you that God is a respecter of persons today. Okay? And it is not so, dear friend. And you got to remember, too, Peter struggled with that. Because if you read in uh, Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 22, Paul rebuked Peter because James, James also struggled. And I, I, the Lord had me to do a video on Acts 21, 18 through 27, um, about showing that James struggled with the us and them mentality, that God was still a respecter of persons. James struggled with that, okay? Yes, he did. You read Acts chapter 21. Paul, okay, went into the temple. And just before Paul was about to make an animal sacrifice is when the Lord allowed the Jews to allow things to happen to Paul to get him out of there before Paul offered an animal sacrifice, okay? You check that out in Acts chapter 21, okay? Peter James, they struggled with this respecter of persons thing. They did. They did. Okay? As many do for some reason. But today, in this dispensation, God is not a respecter of persons. Acts chapter 15, verses 6 on to verse 11. All you need to, re do, to do is to refute heretics like Mark the Messenger. Okay? Why are you saying him, Brad? See, you're raising... No. No. He is a perfect... Prime example. He teaches, number one, against eternal security, once saved, always saved. He teaches against the redemption of the purchased possession. He teaches that in order to be right with God, you have to keep the Ten Commandments. He plainly teaches that. That's heresy. Those are words to no profit, my friend. Okay? 
Words to no prophet are someone telling you that, yeah, you got to keep the law of Moses today. Okay? All right? And in Acts chapter 15, okay? Verse 1, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised, after the manner of Moses ye cannot be saved. What does that mean? They were meaning that you had to keep the law. Okay? That there were those uh, certain that came down from Judea that of uh, that taught the brethren they believed okay but they said you got to keep the law hence God is still a respecter of persons but in Acts chapter fifteen verses six on to verse eleven dear friend and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter and when there had been much disputing Peter rose up. And said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Talking about Cornelius, which we just looked at. Okay? And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. God is no respecter of persons. The mystery of the gospel that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 3. That's the mystery that us Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay? Not replacing them. Okay? Not replacing. See, there are many out there who say they are Jews and are not. Catholics, they don't openly say they are Jews, but they teach replacement theology. Brazenly so. Mark the messenger. Okay? He teaches, he believes in his dis deluded, diseased little brain that he's an actual Hebrew descendant of the Hebraic line. He's not. He's of Ham. Okay? All right? And verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their, purifying their hearts by faith. Okay? Now they're for, and right here. Right here. Any of you disciples of that diseased devil, Mark the Messenger. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? You can't keep the law perfectly. You mess up at one point, you blow it all. Okay? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. All right? Okay? Now, the book of James, okay? James, all right? The book of James, which is written for the Jews, the Hebrews, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? This is for... Doctrinally specific for the Jews, the Hebrews, during the time of Jacob's trouble, just like the book of Hebrews is. Okay? But there are things for definitely instruction in righteousness and doctrine that does cross dispensational lines within the book of Hebrews and within the book of James. After the Jews come to the realization when that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes into the third rebuilt temple, looking in his visage as the Roman Catholic Jesus, as I believe, thank you, brother, okay? The Jews, some of them are going to be like, oh, wow, we done messed it up. And then they're going to have recollection. Oh, those that got redeemed, that disappeared, they were telling us the truth. They're going to go to the book of Hebrews, and they're going to go to the book of James. you got to remember that, okay? But James chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 7. Teaching that God is a respecter of persons. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? It is the time of Jacob's trouble. God is turning his attention back onto the Hebraic Jewish people. But see, that man of sin, the son of perdition, with the mark of the beast, the elitists, the esoteric, who have the mark of the beast, okay? Okay? My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. Gay means happy, not sodomite, like the devil has messed up with the def uh, twisted the definition of it, okay? And say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves? and are become judges of evil thoughts. Okay? Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which have, which he hath promised to them that love him? Verse 5 is significant. Why? Because the poor. Uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, 
You don't take that mark of the beast, you're not going to be able to buy or sell. You're not going to be able to eat. You're not going to be able to get any fundage because it's all going to be uh, in the right hand or in the forehead. So those who don't take the mark of the beast are going to have to go into seclusion, into hiding. Okay? All right? But there might be some who were before the implement, implement, uh, implementation of the mark of the beast were rich. And, well, and we're going to look at that. And they're, they're like, wait, I don't want anything to do with that. And they're going to come on to these poor saints. Okay? But, right here, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? The poor saints who refuse the mark of the beast? Okay? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Is that not true uh, for today for our instruction in righteousness? The esoteric crowd, okay? The Jesuit uh, order who have, who have done all of this. And the Masons work for the Jesuits, okay? Not the other way around. Don't forget that, okay? See, that's what the Jesuits have done. They have gotten rid of the middle class. You're either elite or non-elite. Okay? All right? All right? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? And how do they blaspheme his name? By taking the mark of the beast. Okay? That's what verse 7 is talking about. Do not they, the rich men, who despise the poor, who have taken the mark of the beast, okay? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? You take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. You can't cut off your, head, your hand or gouge it out of your head. You take that mark of the beast, you're dead. Duh, not dead. Yeah, you are. You're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. There's no repentance after that. There's no turning back from that, okay? Hence, blaspheming the, that worthy name. Okay, and also in James chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 6, you got you hear a lot of people because the American economy is going to collapse here sooner or later by gold and silver, gold and silver. And then you're going to take a bar of gold and go to Walmart and try to do an exchange. What's the exchange rate? It's not going to work. James chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 6. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Gold and silver don't rust. What does that mean? It means that they're not being used, that they are of no value during the time of Jacob's trouble. You got these people today say, hey, when the economy busts up, gold and silver, gold and silver. How? What's the exchange rate going to be? Huh? Gold and silver is not going to mean anything during the time of Jacob's trouble because that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to implement the mark of the beast. Okay? So these rich people, who you got your millions in your Swiss bank account, you snob, okay? Or I, you know, I got nothing to worry about. I got all, you snob, okay? Your gold and your silver is cankered. It won't benefit you during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? God is not a respecter of persons. Okay? And today, how this, for instruction in righteousness today, gain is godliness. Right? Whether it's do re me, whether you got property upon property, where you can establish your own little mini mansion with your swimming pools and have umpteen number of vehicles and stuff like that and, and rub it into the poor people's face. Yeah, gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Or or they're very popular. They they itch and tickle people's ears, right? Yeah. Give me a break. Okay? Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. <laughs> Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them have reaped, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nursed your hearts as in a day of slaughter. 
Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. And of course, you the parable of the uh, publican and uh, the uh, Pharisee. Uh, he who exalts himself shall be abased, and he who abases himself shall be exalted. Okay, okay. You think you're something. Uh, when you're nothing, you deceive yourself. Uh, humility, okay. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the hand of God, that he may exalt you in time and good time. Okay, where is that written? Where is that? Uh, James chapter 4, okay, verses 7 on to verse 10. Submit therefore, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Teaching that God is a respecter of persons today. He isn't. Okay? The only color that our Lord is going to see at the judgment day is red. The red blood of Christ, like it talks about in the Exodus. You'll see the blood on the doorpost, and Jesus is the door. And if he sees the blood on the doorpost, he'll pass over. Okay? Be afflicted and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves to in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Job, chapter 41. See, this is why true brokenness of your self-righteousness is a requirement. You got these people who, because they're elect, they're not elect. Because they're elect, because they're black, or because they're British, white, Hebrew, Israelite. <laughs> Lie. God is not a respecter of person. Today in this dispensation. Okay? God is not a respecter of persons today. Beware of people who teach that God is a respecter of persons today. Salvifically. Okay? We're not talking about the social thing. Because, because of the Jesuit order, they've destroyed all of it. The Jesuits are the ones promoting the race kindred card. And their disciples, you can see them plainly. Okay? You can see them plainly, okay? Job, chapter 42, verses 1 under verse 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare unto thou unto me, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth. Reference unto the second coming. Okay? This will be the repentant state of jewelry right before the second coming. Okay? Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. See, there are those out there who will teach you. Go to Galatians chapter 3. There are those out there who will teach you because you are black. You have an in with God. Trying to say that they're true Hebrews. They're not. The British Hebrew Israelites with the serpent seed doctrine that we're white of Japheth. We have a special in with God. You do not. Not in this dispensation. You're a Jew. Okay? Or of Shem. That you have a certain in. You do not. You do not. Not today. Not in this dispensation. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 on to verse 29. And see, guys like Mark the Messenger, the Calvinists, are those at Shepherd's Chapel with the serpent seed doctrine. The Mormons, okay, that teach that those who have black skin are cursed. And you see, a Hamite who is a Mormon, it's like, when I, and I've seen, and I've done this. I'll go, you know, I see a Mormon, a Hamite, who is a Mormon. It's like, son, what's wrong with you? Do you know what they teach in the original printings of their Book of Mormon, a moron, and what is it, Second Nephi, about how those who have are cursed have black skin? Huh? Are you aware of that? See, 
the heresy of these last days is that God is a respecter of persons salvifically. Galatians chapter 3. There is one way of salvation to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? Brokenness of your self-righteousness. Contrition, it's your fault. You can't blame other people, son. And fear of him. And that happens when you are broken. It happens in one fell swoop. It's not one step, two step, three. Are you saved, brother? It doesn't work that way. I can explain that to you. But unless you are broken of your self-righteousness, you're never going to get it. Because you're self-righteous and you teach and you believe that God is a respecter of persons, especially for yourself. Because you've seen the Lord with your own eyes. You deceived dolt. Or because you're black. Huh? Or because you're white. Or because you're a Jew. No. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized, identified into Christ, have put on Christ. Identified with his death, burial, and resurrection. What is the cross? It's death. It's death. And what dies? Your self-righteousness. You are identified with the cross, which is death. And also, which is rebirth, new life. Okay? There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And this is another video that's going to come in the future. A rant about this stupid gender thing that Satan has done to defile mankind with. Okay? And they might come to this. This is talking about salvation. There's no distinction in salvation. And you got the Calvinists, Mark the Messenger, uh, the British Hebrew Israelites, the Serpent Seed Doctrine, heretics, and a lot of the Charismatics teaching you that God is a respecter of persons salvifically. It's a lie. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And of course, Colossians chapter 3, and then we will, we, will, we will be done. We will be done. Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 on to verse 13. Okay? You come to the Lord broken, contrite, and in fear of Him, call upon His name, and He saves you. You are to mortify, kill your flesh, keep it down. Okay? To live a life of continuous sanctification. Okay, not unto salvation because you come to the Lord on his terms. He saves you. You're once saved, always saved. Or else God's a liar. And see, guys who teach that you got to keep the law, who are against, once saved, always saved, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay. <laughs> okay, come on. Come on. You're once saved, always saved. God is in you. It's not your salvation. You understand, okay? But, verse 8, But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Why not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Those who come to him on his term. Heretic says that everybody's going to be saved. Everybody. A part of coming the way of the cross. That's, that's a lie. This is in context to those who come to the Lord on his terms, not booting the door out of the way. Okay? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. This elect is talking about the elected way of the cross. Not the Calvinistic elect and non-elect. Not the satanic uh, black Hebrew Israelite chosen one. Or the British Hebrew Israelite chosen one. No. That elect is the elected way. This is East. The elected way of the cross. That's what that's talking about. Okay? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, 
kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. There are those out there who teach there is a distinction in salvation. That is a lie. And to all of you who have accused me of this, uh, I have not oppressed or suppressed any of you, the Hamites, okay? I haven't oppressed you, okay? I haven't suppressed your people, okay? I haven't been a, a slave owner, okay? You're the racist. You're the racist. You're the racist. I have not oppressed any of you, okay? I haven't oppressed your people. You're the racist. You're the kindredist. And you're being taught that by Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order. Your enemy is not one of an opposing skin color. Your enemy is the Vatican. And why don't you grow up and open your eyes to that truth? <laughs>